Okay, so it's been a hot minute, but I'm back. Um, yes, I'm the colorblind architect, and it's been a few weeks since my last video, but today I'm going to be talking about ARCHICAD 27, I'm going to be talking about Inkscape for Mac, and I'm going to give you a brief little update about my office. <laughs> Alright, so first things first, let's talk about The Office. Now, if you've been following my channel for any amount of time, you know that I've been building an office in my backyard, and oh my goodness has this been such a long process, partly because I um, had to switch contractors, uh, we had a really intense winter, and then the current contractor, they're great, but obviously this being a small project and on a small budget, it's been kind of the slow moving project, but we've got this progress going on. Uh, we're almost framed up. We're going to have, um, we're going to have the building, uh, fully shot created soon. So I'm really excited. Once I do, I'll have a nicer studio to not only work on my projects that pay, you know, like the actual architecture that I do, but um, I'll also be able to have a better studio for creating videos like this. Now, next thing, ARCHICAD 27 is now available for download, the official release. Now, if you're like me, you've already downloaded the technology preview and you've spent the whole summer building out your new template so that you can be good to go day one. Hopefully, hopefully, did you, did you, did you? Maybe. Okay, well, if not, go ahead, download it. It's great. I love ARCHICAD 27. There's so many good improvements to this version. Totally worth the upgrade. And I think even just right now, what you see on the screen is this, um, this little concept track home that I've been uh, working on. It's not 100% just yet, but... Um, you know, the, it's, it's got kind of an, you know, it's kind of got a cool little, uh, vibe to it, but here's the thing. Um, I've got the ambient occlusion or the, uh, as ARCHICAD or Graphisoft ARCHICAD calls it under the more options, enable physically based rendering, uh, as I was corrected, yes, this is just ambient occlusion. It's an old, vi you know, visualization technique. But hey, Graphisoft, thank you, thank you. It still makes it so much easier on the eyes to be able to see what I'm working on in 3D, and it utilizes the graphics processor. Um, here's the thing: on my Mac M1, on my M1 Max MacBook Pro. Um, it has graphics processors built into it, and it does a pretty good job. Is it as good as my PC that has the NVIDIA RTX 3060? No, not even close. But this is a huge improvement, okay? Now, here's the thing. Do you remember a couple weeks ago, Apple just released their new Apple iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max phones? And... Well, hey, I got one. Why? Well, here's my reasoning. Uh, first was I wanted a bigger screen for my, uh, you know, drone missions. So I got the Pro Max. Second, um, having the 5X optical zoom, uh, thanks to the prismatic um, telephoto lens on this. Oh, my goodness. Amazing, amazing quality. Now, why do I bring this up? Okay, now in the announcement, when they talked about the iPhone, the iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max phones, they talked about the processor, the A17, I think, um, is what what it is, if I remember correctly. Now the the A17 is really interesting because they talked about the graphics cores in there, and they mentioned real time ray tracing graphics cores in the iPhone. Okay, now why am I excited about this? The reason why I'm excited about this is I think the fact that they brought it to the iPhone, 
the fact that we have it now, I don't think the Mac is far uh, behind. I think the M3 series of M3 Pro, M3 Max, and M3 Ultra processors for the Mac, I believe they're going to have real-time ray tracing. A first for Macintosh in the history of Macintoshes. So it's going to be a huge improvement. Finally catching up a little bit. Okay, I know NVIDIA is still way beyond Apple when it comes to real-time ray tracing. So let's just be clear on that. But it's still a huge improvement for those of us who like to have our MacBooks and being able to work on them as their as the primary driver because we can also then take it with us and work wherever we are, whether we're on vacation or at a coffee shop or, you know, sitting in front of a green screen. Okay? So now, finally, for the big show. Okay, I promised you that we're going to look at Inkscape for Mac. And as you can see right here, I've got Inkscape on this computer. Now, here's the great thing about Inkscape. With the new licensing scenario, you will have the license for both Windows and Mac. So whichever license you're running your ARCHICAD on, it's tied to that ARCHICAD license. And so you're able to work both. So I'm going to go ahead and start Inkscape and... Okay, the first thing that you'll notice when you start up Inkscape on the Mac from Archicad, it's not as fast as on Windows. So just to start off, it's not as good. Now, I'm going to go ahead and plop my Archicad on the other half of the screen so that we can see both side to side. Now, by the way, just real quick, if you are using a Mac, and you want to be able to do the window snapping like this, like what I just did. If you have Parallels for Mac, which allows you to run Windows on a Mac, it comes with this thing called Parallels Tools, and one of the tools available to you is the window snapping like that. It doesn't come natively with Macintosh. I don't know why Apple hasn't included it, because Windows had it for years. It's a great, great feature really quick easy and really helpful okay now the second thing that i do when i'm using um inscape is i like to go ahead and turn on the synchronized views okay the reason is because that way when i'm in archicad i can go ahead and adjust the views to where i want it and you can even go into the walk mode and you can immediately have that feedback anywhere around and where this is really helpful is it allows you to edit things you know on the fly in 3d you can make these adjustments and it's just a lot quicker and because you can see the inscape on the right side here it's like it, it gives you this ability to see a little bit more of how things are going to look in a more realistic view um, again this is you know, fairly rudimentary, but I, I just like it. I really like being able to do this. Okay. Now, the next thing that you'll notice is on Inkscape, just like in the Windows version, there's the view management where we can create new views. And in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and position us so that we're right about there. And I'm going to create a view. Now, when you create a view, it's just like in Windows, we can adjust the sun, the solar angle, you know, the azimuth, the, the altitude. And the nice thing is it also gives you night mode, which, of course, uh, one of the things you'll notice is you really need to be careful with your material settings. Um, if, you're, <laughs> if your emission is too high on a ARCHICAD material, like these window frames they're gonna glow in the dark like this not a good look just a little helpful hint there okay so let's just go ahead and set that and then we're just gonna save this and then you'll notice once it creates the view it will actually appear here in the view map right up at the top under the inscape folder 
So I'm going to fast forward a sec. Okay, so that's how we create views. I'm just going to say, I love the fact that it synchronizes the views between ARCHICAD and Inkscape. That way it's so much easier to make sure that you know exactly where everything is and it's, an, it's just really great. Okay, now, one of the things that is different in the Macintosh version, and at first when I was trying it out, I was really panicking. There was no asset button here. I was really freaking out, okay? Um, so normally in the Windows version, there's an asset button here and it opens up this palette here where the view management is that allows you to place assets within the uh, Inkscape window. Now, like I said, at first I was really freaked out. The good news is they didn't do away with it, obviously, because, you know, there's assets to be placed. What they did was you go into the Inkscape menu on ARCHICAD and then you go to your asset library. And then let's say we search for a type of tree, let's say a linden tree. And I'm going to go ahead and choose one of these linden trees. Now, this isn't, we're doing a summer, I'm going to do a summertime one. Um, and this one, we're just going to double click on it. Once you've, once you've double clicked, what it does is it actually puts you into uh, object place mode in ARCHICAD. And so you place it in ARCHICAD, not in, uh, not in Inkscape. Now, you'll notice that when I did that, uh, this tree is freaking ginormous relative to the size of the house. Um, it's a total fail <laughs> in my book. Um, but, you know, it's it's largely because, you know, it's a fully grown mature linden tree and I placed it way too close to the house. It really shouldn't be like that. Um, so, you know, obviously... Here's another thing that I'll note is it's a little bit slow. Um, it's not the greatest. So please be aware that this, it's still going to be faster on your windows machine. So I'm just going to move that a little bit further away. So it's not quite as obnoxious. Okay. So if we go back into our Inkscape view number two, I'm going to edit this because I don't like how the shadows are. So I'm going to throw the sun over on this side. And maybe just a little bit taller here. Okay. It's not letting me save it for some reason, but that's okay. Now, Obviously, it's got all, a lot of the same settings as the. Um, it's got a lot of the setting. It's got a lot of the same settings as the Windows version. Um, as we do the output, uh, you can choose your um, Ultra HD or Full HD settings. Your folder where you want to save it to. Um, in this case, I'm going to save this to downloads folder just to make it quick and easy sky uh, you know what I'm gonna make the clouds just a little less dense okay image main okay good and then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and do a screenshot and save it to the downloads folder Okay, now off screen, and by the way, lovely, my lights up above, which are battery powered, they decide, they decided to die on me uh, while we were recording this. So now you can see my green screen all behind me, just lovely. Um, okay, so I'm gonna go to the downloads folder. Okay, and there's the rendering. So it's, 
you know, obviously. Now, here's what I'm going to say about this rendering. So first off, because we're doing this kind of odd shape to the window for the purposes of this video, we don't actually see what the screen is going to be rendering. So I do suggest if you're going to do this, you know, obviously try to make it more of like a six, uh, tr traditional 16 by 9 aspect ratio for the image, you know, um, just just to make sure you're actually getting the right uh, view. The other thing is, you know, you can obviously play with a lot of these settings and adjust your output quality, you know, like, you know, obviously if you want to go Ultra HD, um, there's, there's a lot that you can get into this. What I mainly wanted to illustrate is that, yes, it works. We are, we now have Inkscape for Mac. It works well. It's not as good as the Inkscape for Windows. Um, I think a lot of that is because Inkscape for Windows has been around for a longer time. It's able to benefit from the NVIDIA RTX graphics card, which gives you much better fidelity. And, um, you know, it just, uh, what can I say? I think it's coming. I think it's going to improve. And that's about it. Um, what I would love to see is I'd love to see all of your comments. I'd love to see suggestions for what you would like to see uh, me cover in future videos. Um, one of the things I'm trying to do is I'm trying to actually schedule out a regular time for these videos. It's um, the, these do take time to produce. And so I'd love to be able to help you out in any issues that you're having with ARCHICAD. Just uh, hit me up and I'd love to uh, research it and get better because, I mean, that's the main thing is improving our skills as architects so that we can help our clients uh, design their worlds. And with that, I'm going to bid you adieu for another day. I'm the Colorblind Architect. Peace out.